in there. It's what? Oh Shit. my god. Morning and welcome to Transnistria. Transnistria is an unrecognised country between Moldova and Ukraine. I've wanted to come here for ages, but obviously because of COVID, it's just stopped me going, to be honest. But now I'm here and I want to see what it's like. I landed in Chisinau last night in Moldova. It's my first time in Moldova, so I've never been. I crossed the border into Transnistria, which was quite easy, to be honest, because it was late at night, so I'm guessing the guard was tired, so he was just like, go. And then I got to the hotel. And you're probably wondering why I'm in a sauna. Well, the reason I'm in a sauna is because it's actually in my hotel room, which cost me 40 euros. So you come out the sauna, you've got like this living room. Oh, let me show you the fish tank. Check out that. It's not even a duvet, it's like a, a fleece. Look at them for sheets. As per usual, I'm late and in a rush, so I need to grab my stuff and meet the guy downstairs. And we're heading to the centre, but we're in Tiraspol. Let me introduce you to Tim. You've lived here for how long now, mate? 15 years, brother. Originally from Nebraska. Nebraska, corn and cows. <laughs> I was supposed to catch up with Tim flipping egg, what, 2020? But obviously because of COVID, just put all the travels back. But yeah, I've been like interested in this place. Obviously like Bald and Harold have done videos here and obviously you hear about transition, you think, what's it all about? And I wanted to come here and, you know, see what it's like here, basically. You've been here for 15 years. Like, what made you want to come here? I started out in Nebraska, but clear back in my youth, I wanted to leave and I wanted to see the world. I just started traveling. And eventually I came to East Europe and East Europe was the place I love the most. I love the culture here. I love the prices here. And how's your 15 years been here? Have you enjoyed it or? Yeah, I mean, it's been good times and bad times. I was the very first foreigner ever to live in Transanista. No way, you were the first ever foreigner to live here. There was no other foreigner so, I here. I didn't know that, mate. Yeah, I was the very first. There was no other foreigner ever living here before me. So they didn't know what to do with me. When I first moved here, I got followed by KGB. They That's weren't insane. allowing in journalists. They weren't allowing in tourists for more than 24 yeah. hours. I had to smuggle tourists across the border in order to have any kind of business. Mate, that's It was mad. crazy. I can go on and on and Have on. you smuggled me across the border? I will if you want. <laughs> Tell me, why is Transnistria an unrecognized country? Why doesn't it exist? Well, it's the politics of the elite and the oligarchy. I mean, there's power plays for resources. There's slice of the pie, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of monopolies that play in Eastern Europe, and they kind of fight over their space. The Western journalists say Russians soldiers are stationed here. In reality, there are boys. Yeah, they're yeah. They're Transanista boys who've never even been to Russia. They just have Russian passports. Mate, I, I like how you like define yourself as a Transnistrian now. Yeah. You're I like, mean, they're our boys. All my friends call me an American Transanistan. Really? I mean, they've accepted me yeah, uh, yeah. as one of their own. So it's really cool. Fair play. Yeah. Right, we've just got to the entrance of Transnistria. Is this right? No, entrance of Tiraspol. We're at the gates of Tiraspol. So these are the gates of Tiraspol over here. Yeah, and, and you can see the flags, like the Transnistrian flag over there. Russian flag, Transnistrian flag, city of Tiraspol. It looks quite busy, mate. A fair few cars. Yeah, it's a lot more busy than when I first moved here. Yeah. Was it dead when you first moved? Well, you know, it still was a little more Soviet and people had less money. And now they've got relatives working in places like Germany and they're yeah. bringing in more cash. So they have new cars, at oh, least wow. used cars, I should say. How many people actually live in Tiraspol? Only 150,000, but that varies because, like I said, a lot of people work in places like Moscow, Germany, Poland. How many people live in the whole of Transnistria? Only about 600,000 in the whole country. 600,000 in the yeah. whole country? In the entire country. We've just got into the main city centre now. And to be honest, I'd say it's quite quiet just to show you what it looks like. Interesting, really. You were saying that's the central bank, Tim? That's the central bank of Transanista. That's where they make those little plastic rubles that all the tourists want to get. We'll have to get some of those plastic we'll rubles. We'll definitely get some. Is it ever busier than this, mate? Or is this as busy as it gets? Only on holidays. I've got to be honest, though, Tim. It doesn't look 
like there's too much to do here. Would I be right in saying that? Basically what you gotta rely on is the social atmosphere, your circle of family and friends. In that atmosphere, you get invited to tons of parties, shashlik parties in the forest. Really? Dutch is it a party. big party culture going on here? Yeah, though? it's actually a big party culture, but you gotta know where it is and you gotta be in the circle. Just looking at the number plates on the cars, and there's actually a Transnistria flag actually on the number plate. Right, mate, let's go on an adventure in Transnistria. Oh, we're gonna find some bizarre Soviet places, I guarantee. Mate, what no, is going on here? To go in. This is an old Soviet pub. Yeah, but and, mate, this can't be the entrance, surely. This is the entrance. They have it all blocked off because they usually sell homemade vodka here, which is technically illegal, but they sell right, it everywhere. Let's go in there. This is some entrance to a pub, this. Oh, wow. Hi, how are you? How are you? You good? Nice to meet you. Yeah. You had vodka? 12 o'clock midday? This guy's steaming. What right, get everyone vodka. Let's get everyone vodka. You want vodka? Yeah. Vodka? Buddhist vodka? I think this guy might have had enough vodka though. Yeah, he wants one. Okay, one. cool. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. After you. Let's go. <laughs> go on, after you. Are we going? Let's go. Let's go. Are we going? After you. Oh wow, this guy is all over the place. What's this guy's name? I am. Andre. Andre Simon. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Uh, vodka. Vodka, skoka, sto, Big one. Sto. Sto gram vodka for us. Yeah, vodka for Andre. Vodka? Yeah, the high one, big one, yeah. Da. Yeah, da, da, da. 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 Ask this guy what, what time we started drinking. This morning, for breakfast, 100% for sure. Jeez. Is this like proper Russian vodka, is it? Stop. Yeah, this is made right Stop. here. Stop. Stop. gram, da. Не надо, не Wow! Молодец! Спасибо большое. Oh, and the uh, waitress is... Yeah, I was gonna say. The waitress is stoned up. Yeah, I think the waitress is ruined as well. Уже должен. Everybody is hammered here. She couldn't even pour the vodka, it's all over the desk. 25 rubles or... 400 grams of vodka. That's basically a bottle of vodka for a pound. Бля, мамин! Here we go. The waitress yeah. is totally smashed. Money. Oh, ah, yeah, money, Mario. Here you go. Here's your money back. Okay, here's my money, money back. I'll pick this. Andre, give me money. Uh, what's he saying? Oh, he's asking for money. Listen, I got you vodka instead. Oh, no problem. Lovely to meet you. Nice. You enjoy the vodka. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? It's all picking up in the pub. Yeah, yeah. And she's completely wasted. She, is, it, is everybody steaming in this place? Everybody's completely wasted. And this old Soviet bars, it's vodka for breakfast. It's what? Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all good. You want vodka? It's all good. Oh, whoa, whoa. We've just spent money in this pub and it's all kicking off. We're going. Oh, we're going. Okay, we'll go. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your health. Thank you. Whoa. Jeez. See you later, Andre. Look after yourself. See you later, mate. Let's go. Bye. Hey, what has just happened in there? Just walked into Soviet breakfast in Transanista. Welcome hey, to it. It's midday. It's, it's all just, kicking off in there. It's kicking off, man. It's 90% vodka, 10% food. Jesus. <laughs> I, bought, I bought the whole pub of vodka and then we start kicking off. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Your name? <laughs> Nikolai, Nikolai, nice to meet you. Do you live here, Nikolai? Or? It's his work, he works here. He works here, and does he live locally, does he? Yeah, yeah right here in this village. He's lived here his whole life. Do you like Lenin? Yeah, do you like Lenin? Yeah, Communism is good. It was good back then. So yeah. he likes the Soviet Union. Yeah, but Most now it's difficult. They don't have money, don't have what to eat.
not a clue where I'm going here, but this guy seems pretty cool. Jeez, what is this place? Oh, here we go. The lights are on. Oh, yeah, wow. So what is this place? A theatre? Yeah, yeah, I haven't got a clue what you're saying, but yeah, we're on stage. Yeah. So what is this place then? This is the old Soviet theatre, exactly as it is. You can look, if you look at the ceiling Whoa. and the lighting, and look at this old spotlight, for example. This is oh, wow, is this an original? Nothing has changed in this theatre since 1950. Old it's exactly Soviet as it is. And the interesting thing about this theatre is, this is where Transanista declared independence. This is independence. What, this theatre? This theatre right here, they declared independence. So, were you here for independence? No. He was. This is insane. To think Transnistria declared independence here, and I'm just stood on the stage, like, the history in this place. So who declared independence here? The old president? He was here in this hall when independence was declared, and he was president for 23 years. And that was in 1992? That's correct. So I'd have been one years old. So how many people were in here? It must have been rammed. People must have been bursting out the doors. Yeah, a few hundred, but it was on the down low. It was secret because actually at that time they were part of Moldova. Moldovan nationalism after the collapse of the Soviet Union was running rampant and they wanted to be part of Romania. So Nikolai, where were you sit when he was declaring independence? Where was Nikolai? outside was with the flags. Oh, he was outside of the bit, so he wasn't inside, he was outside with the flag. So was he here when the bombings happened? He was a fireman. Yeah, he was, he was a fireman. He was 23 years old. Young. He was 23 when it happened. So he similar 21. age to the people. Uh -huh. Did he go to when the bomb happened? Or? Yeah, yeah. Who bombed all those young lads? No, Maybe it's a rocket from Moldova. Is that what it was? Was it a rocket? Yeah. Then you... yeah. What did you see? Last time they were Was part of body. Yeah. Oh Jesus! All that. Human body parts and meat. Yeah. How many Everywhere. people did it kill? So the twenty. So the... Twenty in total. Nikolai, thank you so much. This is for you. Ah, no problem. Spasiba. Yeah, Spasiba, no problem. You look after yourself. Jesus, that was pretty hard to watch that, wasn't it? Yeah, and you could see by how emotional he was that he really felt it. I mean, yeah. all these years have passed, but in his mind, he relives it. Because you could tell by just the questions we were asking him, it was still a vivid memory. It was a vivid memory because these young men were only 19 and 20 from a small village where everybody's interconnected. And he's a fireman who had to literally pick up their body parts. You know, at that age, you can't even imagine that, can you? It's just horrible. But that's the thing, you know, you travel the world and you go to all these different countries and you come to places like this and you don't realise the history and, you know, what people have gone through to get their independence and stuff like that. It's very intricate stories. What I've discovered is nothing is black and white. Everything is shades of grey. The Western media often paints everything black and white, good and evil, and that's just not true. And when you come to places like this, you find that out. Right, so these are all the young lads that Nikolai went to. Look at all these people. 18, 19, Jesus, so they're all young then, aren't they? None of them are over 20 years old. They just died in an instant. Body parts everywhere, and like Nikolai said, he had to go clean up this mess, and you're going to be affected by that for the rest of your life. And we are now in a town called Bender. I'm saying that right, am I, mate? That's right, Bender. We're on in a Bender. Bender in Bender. We're definitely not going on a Bender in Bender. <laughs> but we do need to get back to Tiraspol now, so we're going to jump on the bus. Is it one of these buses? It's one of these old Soviet buses. They've been here since 1950, and they're still running. Really? How often are these buses? About every three days. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I hope not, because it's freezing. Is this our bus? This one doesn't have a number. Oh, 19, there we go. And here we have it, an old Soviet bus. There's not even any seats at the back of this. How much is this bus? Two rubles, I think. How do we even pay for it? The lady just walks up with a roll of tickets. You pay her two rubles and she gives you a little And how much is two rubles in British pound? It's 20 to one, so it'd be a penny. So from Bender to Raspol is one penny. Yes. Jesus, that's one cheap. One city to another for one penny. There's no central heating on this, I'm bloody freezing. No, you're gonna freeze. So when does this bus actually go? As soon as it gets more full. What, you've gotta wait for the bus to be full to go? Not necessarily full, but at the driver's discretion, when he thinks there's sufficient amount of people on here, he'll go. Oh, here we go. Oh, Jesus. The lights are flashing. <laughs> yeah. 
Right, here's the ticket lady coming out. I've never actually seen a ticket lady on a bus before. Yeah, it's unusual. But over here, they don't have anything high tech. These are old Soviet buses from 1950s. So there's literally an old grandmother who walks back and forth on the bus, collects the money, rips off a ticket, and hands it to you. Uh, how much? This much? Yeah, three. Three? Ah, thank you. How long have you been working on this? 15 years she's been working on this. 15 years on this bus? Wow. Spasibe Boca. Is it Boca? Boca. Boca. You were actually kind of saying it sounded like vodka. <laughs> My Russian needs some work, right? I've been saying bye to everybody all day by shouting vodka at them. They think you're gonna buy drinks, so it's good. <laughs> We've just arrived at this Soviet garage lot. Is that what you'd call it? That's what you call it. There's about 100 garages here from the Soviet period. We're just outside of Tiraspol, just isolated enough that my brother Alexander has a great garage here. So who's Alexander then? Is he from here? Or? He is from here. He was in the Civil War with Moldova and he's a veteran. What's in this garage? I can't tell You've, like, you. You've like been hyping it up I to can't. me. I can't. There's some nice green tea and we're going to enjoy tea and crumpets and... Crumpets? Big booms. Big booms, right? Yeah. Let's go check this out. <laughs> Right here on the right, let's go. This one here, yeah? Mate, this garage is insane. Nice okay, to meet come you. On, come on, come on. This is amazing. So much from Jack Rock here. Oh wow, what gun is this? A Germany. A Germany gun. What from Second World War this gun? Oh my god, look at all this stuff. This is just insane. It's probably one of the most randomest things I've ever seen. Mate, what do you reckon? Just a carriage in the middle of Moldova. How old is this? Oh, he's putting it on for me as Chernobyl. well. Chernobyl. This is from Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Jesus. Yes. This coat is from Chernobyl. Oh, I'm with you. They put the gas mask on and then they... Bloody hell. Ah, for radiation. Why does he have all this? Just collecting it over yeah. the years. That's amazing. 1986. This is your coat. So yes, you yes. used to be in the Soviet Union. Bazooka. What about this? Bazooka. But that's a bazooka? Oh my God. Soviet yeah. Union hat. That's your hat? That's his. Flipping eh? He was showing me his Soviet Union coat as well. He's the real deal. Wow. And he collected all this stuff over many, many years. Any weapon from the Soviet period you can think of is in this garage. The famous Soviet machine gun. Pepper oh, shot. Jesus. That's actually quite heavy, that. So you're doing a 46. Ah, 1946, it says it there. Yes, yes. Wow, that is insane. What's this hat? Yuri Gagarin. First you... man in space. First man in space? Yeah, the very first man in space. You're winding me up. This is the first man in space, that's his helmet. Correct. So this is an astronaut's helmet. No, that's not an astronaut helmet. That's actually a MiG pilot helmet. Yeah. But the first astronaut in space has worn this helmet. That's right. <laughs> that is impressive. Oh, wow. Is this a real grenade? It, it's it. real, but it's a dud. You don't have to worry about it. So you've got more grenades as well. Oh, oh. wow. So this is a real flipping out. Uh, this is one German. That is insane. What's this? A grenade or tank. Oh, tank. for a tank. Anti-tank grenade. Yeah. This is the utility knife of the Soviet Union and it fits onto the Kalashnikov. Oh wow, it fits on the gun. There you go. Oh my god, and then you just stab someone with uh, that. If you're out of bullets, you go for it. Oh mate, don't put that <laughs> on. Oh no, no, please, please. There's the man so, who made Kalashnikov. He yeah. made this gun right here. Oh, this guy yeah. made this gun. What's this? Uh, Oh, you can shoot. I'll film, you shoot. I'll be too scared. I'll smash your car straight through the windscreen. <laughs> okay, just so. keep that pointed up and go outside. Yeah. But aren't the police going to come if you like start shooting guns? No, nah, they're used to us. We shoot guns out here all the time. It's kind of like a gun bar. Are you going to come out? No, you're all good. I'll stay here. Three, two, one. Oh, oh wow. yeah. The safety's <laughs> on. you <laughs> Oh Shit. my god! Yes? No problem, Jesus! He didn't do any setup for that. He just blew our ears out. Okay, fire in the hole. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Colt 45. Let's see if about show it. Look at all this stuff. Just got loads of bullets and pictures and coins and badges. There's even a picture of him down here in his Soviet uniform. There he is, there. Aristarch Berlin. This gun? 
Yeah, it's the same gun that was on top of the Ah, back. and that's... Yeah. But, but yes. Ah, so this was in Berlin in 1945, and this was yes, the gun yes, he had. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, whoa. <laughs> Jesus. I'm intrigued to know this guy's story. Are you from Moldova? From Transnistria. You're from Transnistria. Rodilsa, yes, Rodilsa. He born here, he married it, and he will die here. Is that what he said? Yeah. He was born here, he married here, and he'll die here. He, it's obviously his passion, isn't it? It's amazing. It's his passion to collect all these weapons. It's all how, how many years did you fight with the Soviet Union? Four yeah. years. Ha, has he ever left Transnistria? Bulgaria, Romania, Moscow. 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 Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. So like all of Eastern Europe. Kiev, Odessa. Yeah, yeah. Money, money. No, no money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Just everything in this garage. And he loves it, and I love that. So this is a souvenir. <laughs> oh, the, yes. the queen. Yes, yes. And then I put this in here. Thank you. Thank Alexander, you so lovely to Thank meet you. you. Look after yourself. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I tell you what, this is the coolest garage I've ever been in. It's going to take a lot to top this. Hey. Alexander, what a guy, mate. He's he was a great find. He's amazing. And I mean, all the weapons in that garage, it's just like a Soviet fireworks show. But honestly, mate, Transnistria has been an eye opener, to be honest. Met some great people. I think it's been a really cool place. Place. Personally, it's quiet, isn't it? I don't know if I could like live there myself, right? Just because it's so quiet, but you know, there's something peaceful in that as well. And you know, people are happy living there. And yeah, it's like a peaceful chaos. You can relax, but you can also have a really good time. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I do recommend Transistor if you've ever fancied it. I'm also going to give away three skint t shirts. If you want to win a t shirt, comment and like this video and head over to my Instagram at Simon J. Wills. Anyway, have a good one, and I'll see you soon, Tim. It's been been an absolute pleasure, mate. It's been great, absolute brother. Absolute legend. Absolute pleasure. And Tim's got a hostel in Transnistria. What is it, mate? MarsHostel.com, but mostly we do crazy Soviet tours. Free vodka, come join us, brothers and sisters. Look after yourself, mate. Take care, brother. And I'll see you soon. See you later, mate. See you later, brother. I forgot to mention Tim. How do you want to end the video? Welcome to the Wild East. <laughs>